Welcome back to the second part of the hard surface modeling. And we're just uh, creating the sink from a cube, scaled up on the y and the x values of it. We select all the objects, move them up a bit, just to get uh, above the grid. And we have a more clear view. Here we just made a loop cut with Control R and then Control B to move them apart. Here another loop cut and Control B to bevel it. Here we just extruding inwards the. Uh, the upper face and we also choose the vertices of the side move them on the x-axis and then we place the water tap into the center just above the sink next we are going to create more loop cuts for the X and Y axis. Here we made a ring selection to have all the edges selected and then we're going to round them up by pressing Ctrl B to bevel them and adding uh, with a mouse wheel we can add more segments to it to round it even more. We select the middle vertex, Control shift b to bevel and reduce the segments to 2, then right click, loop tools and circle. We move the bottom vertices a little bit more down, select again our new circle, inset, e to extrude and move downwards on the z axis and we made another inset pressing I and move the mouse inwards. Here we also select the bottom faces, expand the selection once, by pressing Ctrl plus and then insert it to create some more support edges which are important to hold the shape when adding the subdivision surface modifier. We're selecting the interfaces, uh, insert them to create more support edges and to clean up our topology a bit. As we can see, we still have to connect some more on the corners. Here, we see that the topology isn't clean, so we have to make a cut. We press K for the knife tool and proceed to make some cuts here to clean up the mesh. We do it also for the other side, this one and also for this one. I press K and then left click, another click and then enter to confirm the cut. 
So next step will be the creation of our sink material, which will be some kind of black granite. Here in the shader editor, we add a color ramp, pressing Shift D, Shift A, sorry, Shift A. And also we added a noise texture, connect both together, color ramp to base color. And here for scale, we increase it to 500, the detail to 2.4 and the roughness to 0.81. For color ramp, we will need three different color positions, three different colors, one at position zero, which will have the color 8C, 8C, 8C. Second position will be at 0.468, the color of 27, 27, 27. As we can see, we have already some kind of granite type of material. And for the third position, which will be on 0 0.8, we type in the code 4D, 4D, 4D. On the Bristol BSDF, we increase the metallic value to 1, reduce the specular to 0 0.3 and the roughness to 0 0.4. Uh, we duplicate the point light reduce the power to 5 and change the light type to Sun. Then we reset the light rotation with Alt R, increase the angle to 35 degrees and we make sure that we have the shadow activated, the shadow, the, the box, the shadow activated. After saving the scene we are back here again and we'll be connecting these vertices uh, of the sink just to reduce our number of end guns a bit to give the sink more uh, more more clear structure so here we're going to connect We connecting the the vertices, which are still not connected, so that our shape will here we press Shift A, then curve and circle. We go into edit mode, press S to scale, then Shift D, right click, and then we scale it down. We press uh, Shift D again, then Y, and then we change the pivot point to 3D cursor, Shift D again, rotate on a Z by 60 degrees, and press Shift R to repeat the last action until we have all six circles around the first circle. Then in edit mode again, uh, first we convert it to a mesh, then we go into edit mode, pressing tab, press A to select all, and then E to extrude on the Z axis. And next we are going to select the inner faces of the circles then uh, shift G to select similar, we choose perimeter. Then we press I to inset, holding control, we make a depth inset. And then we select loops, uh, boundary loop, and then we have all these edges, edge loops selected, and then with control B, we can bevel them to round them up. Here we select the outer faces, extrude along the normals, and then we create a loop cut inside, bevel it with control B, 
then we reduce the selection by pressing Ctrl minus and we move the edges down and bevel it again. So here we are approaching the final part of this video. We're going to scale the background plane up a bit, move it up on the C-axis just over the grid, then we deactivate the bloom in the render tab, name the material of the background plane to be G, choose a more yellowish color. Then with Ctrl Alt 0 we place the camera in view, check camera to view so that any changes we make the camera will follow. And we also increase the end value of the camera settings to 500. Here on frame 1 we press I, then location lo rotation to set a keyframe, then we move forward to frame 250. Move we, we move the image into our camera as we like and then we press I again and choose location and rotation. Here we're playing the animation. And then in the render settings we increase the render samples to 512. Then we give our file our animation name. Change the file former to FFmpeg video, the encoding to MPEG4, and the output quality to perceptual lossless. We go to render, render animation, or control F12. So here we have our final result. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.